Welcome to this QuantHub workshop on uh, pricing options via Fourier inversion techniques as well as the simulation of stochastic volatility models. Um, my name is Roger Lord. I, I head up the quantitative analytics team at, uh, at Cardano, which is a risk management and solvency management firm for institutional investors. Um, the, the two topics today, the, there will be two parts to the workshop, pricing options via Fourier inversion um, and the other topics about the simulation of stochastic volatility models. Uh, they, might seem to, to, they, they might seem a bit disjoint, but there is a main theme throughout the workshop, which is the use of alternatives to black shoals um, and how to best implement those and, and use those models in practice as robustly and efficiently as possible. Um, we all know the, the deficiencies of black shoals, and I won't focus too much on those on the, on the specifics of the alternative models today. Um, of course, I will deal with some properties of the, of the specific stochastic volatility models when we get to them. Uh, but we all know, for example, that there is smile and, and skew present in, in, in the equity and, and interest rate and FX volatility market. Um, so clearly, we have to use an alternative model which has uh, fatter tails. Um, and, and does imply sort of a skew or a smile and can be fitted to the prices that we observe in those derivatives markets. So the first part of the workshop, pricing options via Fourier inversion, will focus on the problem where we have a, uh, a model that has a characteristic function available in, in closed form or one that we can calculate numerically via the solution of a bunch of ordinary differential equations. Um, and then we want to recover the European option prices using Fourier inversion techniques. Why would you want to do that? Well, first of all, you might want to price these European options. Uh, but the main use, in my mind, is to calibrate such models to the prices we observe in the derivatives markets. So suppose, for example, you have um, Heston's stochastic volatility model. Um, you might have an asymptotic expansion available of the implied volatility. Well, clearly you'd like to use that to calibrate your model. Um, and as a second refinement step, you could use the, uh, the Fourier representation of the option price to make sure that your model, that you're, you're not calibrating the model to the expansion, but you're really calibrating the true model to the market. Um, when you're pricing options using Fourier inversion techniques, you really want something that is robust and, and you can trust it in any kind of setting. Um, I remember one of my first managers when I coded up a Fourier pricer, I gave the, the code to him, he played with it for one minute and he came back to me and said, Roger, the option price is imaginary. Um, this is clearly not something you want to, to see in your day-to-day -day practice. You want to just really throw every, any problem at it and make sure that you get a a robust and sound answer back. Um, so that's what we'll deal with in the, in the first part. The second part, uh, simulation of stochastic volatility models, really deals with the follow-up question, um, where you have already calibrated your model to the market, um, and you want to start using it. So you either want to price an exotic derivative, your full portfolio, um, you want to calculate CVA, DVA charge on your portfolio, um, and you're using a stochastic volatility model. So I'm sure any of you who've tried to simulate, for example, Heston, with a simple Euler approximation will have already run into some problems that you encounter. Uh, for example, in Heston, you know that if you use an Euler discretization for the variance, it can and will go negative, so you have to take special care of the boundary condition. Uh, and what we'll look at is three models within, uh, within this part of the workshop. We'll look at the uh, Heston model, um, the Schäbel zoo model, um, and the Sabre model, which uh, a lot of you, I'm sure, use in practice. You use the asymptotic expansion to calibrate your volatility surface. Here we're going to look at the Sabre model and how to simulate that as efficiently and robustly as possible um, in a Monte Carlo setting. And to me, Monte Carlo these days is still the, well, the choice for pricing um, any type of exotic derivative, really. Uh, it can deal easily with path-dependent options, uh, but also since the advent of Longstaff-Schwarz, it can deal with early exercise features without too much problem. 
And the advantage of Monte Carlo is that it's really very easily parallelizable, so you can use it in a, in a GPU computing or a grid environment without too much trouble. Um, before I look at the, at the topics in detail, I, I would like to mention that today's workshop will be practical. So um, there's three bunch of exercises that we'll do throughout today. Um, I suggest if you're watching this video to pause, um, to pause the video. When I'm going to do the exercise, do it yourself. There'll be accompanying spreadsheets. Um, just try the exercise yourself and then look at the video and continue and see how, it, how I intended it to be done. Okay, the first part of the workshop, pricing options via free inversion techniques. Um, first, there will be a little bit of an introduction um, for those of you that are not too familiar with, uh, with Livy processes and affine models. Um, affine models, of course, were set up by, by Duffy, Pan and Singleton and Duffy and Kahn before that. Uh, and most of the models I deal with today, apart from Sabre, will be exponentially affine Livy based models. Um, I'll show how to calculate the extended characteristic function, that is the complex valued characteristic function within these models, how we can do that quite efficiently, and touch a little bit on moments explosions. Um, unfortunately, like in, well, in Black Shoals, any positive or negative moments of the asset is finite. It can get very big, but it will be a finite number. Uh, in models that have fatter tails, um, at least on, on one side of the distribution. So not all moments will exist. An example of that clearly is, is, is the variance gamma or Heston stochastic volatility model. Um, so we have to deal with these moment explosions, at least when we're looking at the problem numerically. Subsequently, I'll really get to the main part of the topic, pricing options via Fourier inversion. There's a number of ways in which we can do that. Um, if you think of the Black-Scholes pricing formula, you've got forward times nd1 minus strike times nd2. Um, we can recover these probabilities nd1 and nd2 via Fourier inversion, or we can use another technique um, that was, in finance at least, first pioneered by Karin Madan. I'll deal with great detail in, with that technique. Moving on, we'll look at Heston's uh, at, the, at the characteristic function in Heston's stochastic volatility model. Um, this is really based on a paper I co-wrote with, with Christian Karl. And we deal here with the complex discontinuities that you might run into if you're evaluating the characteristic function of this model. <coughs> we'll also look at the moment explosions in Heston's model in detail. Moving on, um, optimal Fourier inversion. This part will be based on a paper I co-authored again with Christian Karl, which appears in the Journal of Computational Finance. And it deals with optimal Fourier inversion. It's not, well, it is an optimal in some sense, but it, it really tries to choose a smart way of, of integrating the, um, the, the option price using a clever choice of, of contour. Um, and we can show that, that really um, choosing the right contour is, it can be quite crucial if you look at out-of-the-money options or short maturity options. Finally, Fourier inversion and controls uh, is based on recent work by uh, Yang and Joshi, Mark Joshi, who show how to use control variates to, um, to improve the efficiency of the option pricing algorithm. And we can combine those two as well, uh, which I look at as well. Second part, simulation of stochastic volatility models. Um, I do hope that most of you are familiar with, with Monte Carlo simulation, but I will touch briefly on um, Euler schemes, Milstein scheme, and some exact schemes. Of course, black shoals can be solved exactly, so we can simulate it exactly as well, very easily. And then moving on, I'll focus on Heston's model. Um, in Heston's model, the square root process is really the problem when it comes down to simulating it. So we will, uh, we will spend a little time on looking at its properties and how to, how to come up with a scheme that is as efficient as possible for it. And I'll deal with the exact simulation algorithm of Brody and Kaya, um, some Euler discretization schemes from a paper co-authored with uh, Remart Kukuk and uh, Dick van Dijk. 
quasi second order schemes, schemes and leading up to um, Anderson's scheme, uh, which really is uh, quite, a, quite a genius scheme in, in simulating Heston's stochastic volatility model with as little bias as possible. Finally, some recent work from uh, Chan and Joshi, Mark Joshi again, on, a long, on, a, on a, an algorithm that can be used to simulate Heston at long time steps. So ideally you'd like to simulate your model on the payoff date of your product and um, Josh and Chan's algorithm can be used to do that using some results from Glasserman and Kim's paper. Sherbel Zoo model then, we'll look at um, the Sherbel Zoo model where the volatility is a Gaussian process um, and a paper co-authored with um, Alexander van Haastrecht and Anton Pelser uh, deals with the simulation of this model using techniques from Anderson's paper. Also, I'll touch on the Schäbel Zuhel White model, which uh, is a paper co-authored with the same authors and David Schrager, where we focus on how can we extend the Schäbel Zoo model with stochastic interest rates that are correlated with the assets and the stochastic volatility process and how can we simulate this as efficiently as possible. Finally, the SABRE model. What we'll deal with is um, the, the probabilistic properties of the model. So the SABRE is really related to a squared vessel process. And we'll look at some existing literature on how to simulate the SABRE model as efficiently as possible. Um, there's a scheme recently appeared by Chen Osele and Van der Weyde. Um, which is quite an elaborate scheme on how to, how to deal with the simulation of the SABRE model and achieve as, as low bias as possible. Um, and I'll, I'll also show some new results um, in a paper that we're working on together with John Lund and Adam Fairbrother, which um, deals with many aspects of, of Chen, Osele and Van der Weyde's scheme and tries and improve, to improve upon it. First of all, we can we can improve the, the simulation of the asset by using some moment matching schemes inspired by Anderson's paper. Um, we can really improve the simulation of the integrated variance by using some conditioning techniques from Asian option pricing. Using recent results um, from Makarov and Glue on the simulation of squared vessel processes, we can actually achieve an exact simulation of the asset. Um, and then coupled with this conditioning schemes for the integrated variance, really gives you a scheme that is almost exact. And I'll end with some simpler Euler schemes, because really when you're, when you're just coding something up quickly, you often just w don't want to spend too much work on something to get a quick answer. So a simple Euler scheme that you can just implement in five minutes um, might be good enough.